Hi there and welcome to Bust the Net on another show I like to call Game Changer. It's a chance for me to delve into your safe. And on today's show, we've got a safe from Boblado Jefferson. It was managing Oxford City. This will be one of the few safes I've received that feature a super lower league challenge. I mean, this is like National League South. Right after that, uh, you get promoted. You get to go through the tiers. It's one of the most. It is a challenging safe. Um, however, it's doable. It's not that hard. Um, the challenge really lies in scouting. Right, so it's it really lies in uh, trying to set yourself up in such a way that you can hit sites that are better than you. And sometimes you have to come up with a plan A and a plan B. Now. Um, Put things in perspective. Gloucester City, when I managed them and they won the title, and we're talking about just purely going for the title, going purely for promotions. We're not talking about building players through the, you know, uh, falling in love with your players and hoping they become superstars when you get the Premier League. No, forget it. You know, you want to really do well, then you gotta you gotta disassociate sentiment from your game. So in that particular case, you are literally building a new team every season. So you gotta. You gotta be very, very, um, you know, dispassionate about your team, and you've got to think about uh, Plan A and Plan B. Now, I won't deny it. Gloucester City would ta- change tactics like every, I mean, like every two days. I'll change a tactic. Three days, I'll change a tactic, and that's the reality. I mean, sometimes I, I face teams that are so good that I have to play with six defenders. Now, how do I do that? I play five at the back with one more defender behind them, and I put another guy in front of them. It's like I just did, didn't want to make it easy for other teams to score the goal. I'm not suggesting you go out there and do that, but knowing and understanding when you can hit teams on the break is really important. So you got to look at your own team. You got This is where your own understanding of your team comes in. And let's take a look at the team. This this is when team report and stuff like this is so important. So we're looking at several ways of understanding team reports. So you you're playing several uh four one four ones, right? You've got three basic four one fours. I'm gonna I'm just gonna look at your tactic first and then we're gonna analyze the players. No, we're not gonna analyze the players, we're gonna analyze the players within the tactic. So I'm gonna knock off one tactic immediately because I hate anchor man, right? The game the anchor man is basically the most u- I won't say it's the most useless role in the game, but it's close to it. Uh this guy does just anchors you know, he doesn't close down more. He holds his position. He doesn't tackle hard. Um, now, he doesn't really. He's like he, he's like a pine. You know, a, he's like an obstacle you got to go past on on the pitch. You don't really have to worry if you're playing far away from him because you know he's never gonna come. So if you have a great ch- ball winner here, then playing an anchor man isn't there's no point. So I've actually asked the I asked Quick Pick and. Your best anchor man is a Sinclair. Uh, what's Sinclair? Now let's just forget the anchor man. Let's just focus on the other two systems that you got. You got a uh, left winger. I assume this is a four-one-four-one DM with left wing attack. Um, this is not too bad. You got half back. You got a winger bombing down the flanks. Uh, there's no PIs. You get central midfielder moving through the channels. So that makes a lot of sense. Uh, this he will actually support uh, the winger on attack. You got wing back on defense holding his line. Problem with this setup is the wing back is not really gonna play a part in the transitions when you go into attack. So these two have to do a lot of the work on their own. Uh, you got central midfielder on support playing more risky passes. Why I have no clue. <laughs> Uh, that's that's that that this is okay. Whenever you choose CM on support, please understand this is a generic role. This is a, when he, when I say generic role, this is what I mean. All the instructions are unlocked. This means decision making is huge. Okay, so if your decision making is low, don't do this. Especially in lower league football. In lower league football, you got to become Jose Mourinho. You got to tell the players exactly what to do. So if you want to overperform. In lower league football, of course you can go in there and choose a role and get away with it. There's no denying it. You can. But we're talking about overperforming, right? So if you want to overachieve, then what you need to know is you need to understand your place. This is why lower league challenges test people's knowledge of the game. So here, C- CM on support, definitely I'll remove this. I'll probably be looking at Carrello, right? Because uh, I, I either use a Carrillo here or I use a ball winning midfield on support. Uh, one of those roles where uh, I get a larger sphere of influence. Now, if I use a Carrillo, then I know that he's only going to focus on this area of the pitch. There's nobody really covering this side of the pitch. But if you go halfback, we go wingback on defense. Yeah, to some extent, you can you know you can work you can ignore that. 
Um, you play on counter structure. Now remember your mentality. What does it do? It keeps it affects your width when you're defending. So when your boys are tracking back, they're gonna get very narrow. So you're gonna give away position on the flanks. You're gonna have to deal with crosses. So then you look at your boys at the pack. Can they deal with crosses? You got uh, according to the man, this is your best player here. Uh, jumping reach is a uh, ten. Pepin Angoma. Goma is jumping reach is 10. So we have to check jumping reach now because because of the mentality, this really puts the jumping reach into uh into perspective. And uh so this is the tactic counter structure. Whip crosses now <laughs> whip crosses is one way of crossing, just one way. And it means these crosses are gonna be delivered quickly, they're gonna be delivered relatively low, medium height. Um they're not, not really any options. The guys will be fast, doesn't get there. It's too bad. So uh, let's look at Mac, Mac at T. Now his acceleration is 12, his jumping is 8. Uh, mm. uh, okay. This is lower league football. And I understand that uh, when I'm looking at goals that your team has scored, John McCarthy has scored 20 goals this season. Right? So we know that he's. Very good at finishing the chances. So I'd be very interested to see what kind of goals he's been scoring. Okay, so white midfield on attack is fine. Okay, now we look at this. Uh, this is a more attacking fluid version where you are uh, possession-centric, right? Retain possession, stay on feet, use offside, try roam from positions, much higher defensive line. So you, you, uh, you are playing fewer risky passes from the back, telling your players to push high up the pitch, not to charge into tackles too easily. Now, when you play with the AF on attack, in an attacking fluid system, this guy is on his own 24-7, right? He's going to just bomb off on his own winger. These three, basically, are going to bomb off on their own. Now, uh, it's basically the same tactic. Now, my personal belief is this. If you know your systems well enough, you can play the same tactic in three or four ways. Just change your mentality and change your shape. You don't have to go and do all that stuff. Understand what the shouts do in your game. And, you know, if you want to change stuff, then you just stay on the tactic. What about giving yourself another option? So, we got McAtee on his own. What if you have a game where you're, you know, you just want to have two strikers up top, which is one of the reasons why I actually like the 4 one three, two for uh, lower league sides. Then I can stick three in the middle. We can go to war with them all day long. And then we can have uh, wing backs. Uh, we can have full backs or wing backs at the back. We can unleash one wing back. Then we've got two strikers up top. Uh, we have one striker pushing through the middle, which is generally the way people, most people will design a 4 one 3 2 Very few people are going to design a 4 one 3 2 with side midfielders attacking because that's like seriously uh, asking for trouble. So we've got attacking fluid. What I think that we should do next is to find out where your strengths are. So we go to the team report. We look at um, we look at uh, squad depth. Yeah, this will be good. All right. So we got com first we do comparison rather. Okay, defenders. Okay, when it comes to jumping reach, ten point five five. Right. We just saw you got ten in eleven. Right. The league's highest is twelve. Then we look at strikers jumping reach. Most of the strikers are about. Ooh, wow. We got some fourteen point two five from Dartford. What about their defenders? Uh, we got 12.43 for half one. So 10, 12. Your boys are not going to win a lot of hitters. So hitting uh, is going to be... Uh, hitting is going to be a problem for you. Okay. Uh, let's look at the goals that you conceded. Um, well, that's, that's 42. I think you've just started the season, right? So uh, we don't have to go that far back. Okay. National League South, you played 25 games in the league, give or take a few cup matches. So what we do here is we go to analysis, we look at goals, then we take it to about 35 matches to cover the season nicely with a couple of pre-season friendlies. Uh, why don't I go domestic league matches? Makes it easier. Okay, so we got 30, rather 25. Okay, so this will include this season and last season. All right, so we've got assist locations, right? So most of the assists that... Inside the box, six. I suspected as much. This means that somebody was able to win a header in the box or pass the ball through. So let's look at the goal, uh, goal types. Play shot, 30 of them were play shot, powerful shot, play shot. So this is right. A player has got a lot of time on his hands to put this. I mean, um, yeah, they beat you with a header and there's a play shot, right? So uh, goal assist. We got corner. I suspected as much. Crosses. Uh, cross, most of your goals are conceded from crosses. True balls, 9 out of 4. That's not too bad. But uh, 
you're doing you're doing well in the box, right? Um, going forward, your your right wing is very powerful. Um, and your left your left wing where you have a left wing on attack isn't that fantastic anyway so it's got three even though you you have a left wing uh, attack instruction it doesn't come out that way going forward I would definitely start thinking about crossing into the box so what we do next is we have to analyze the games right so you've got some wins but I'm not interested in your wins I'm more interested in this Avant and Whatever their name is, because I never really knew. Uh, I don't know Havan and Waterloo will. Okay, so we got Havan and Waterloo will. Uh, what this team finished? Uh, I think this is one another team that let's look. Let's take a look at where they sit on the table because this didn't happen. This did not happen very a very long time ago. So they're third on the table, uh, and you lost away three 0 now, we play a 4-1-4-1 four -one, four -one away from home is always going to be a challenge because the more you attack, the more vulnerable you get. You don't really have a counter-attack in a 4-1-4-1. Four -one, four -one. You have a hope that he holds the ball and gets others into play kind of attack. So, the 4-1-4 four -one, four -one away from home is not very good because uh, unless your left winger and your, your AP are very good at holding out the ball and you know driving into space and the guy can do something with the ball, so let's let's take a look. I haven't seen any of your games yet, so this is really, uh, you know, we're, we're going to try and... Uh, Analyze the game. Oh yes, Havan and Lu are using a four four one three two. Even the AI uses the four one three two. Okay, so we start the match up. Uh, you are playing from, um, I think, left to right. Oxford City is. Uh, you are playing for yeah left to right. Pritchard, Killiger. Where is your, where are strikers? Gallagher. This for Fana, Sinclair. I'm trying to figure out who's your team. So white is uh, Oxford City. White is Havant. Okay. So you've got the ball here. Uh, look at how how many players are coming up to support your attack. Sinclair with the ball. You lose the ball here. So your middle th middle tier transition isn't working very well. Okay. So we've got uh, Broom with the ball. As you can see, how many options does this player have to pass the ball? And this is your playmaker, right? So he doesn't really have many options except for this one player who's already offside. So uh, this is one of the reasons why I generally recommend two strikers for most uh, lower league sides. Gallagher, if you want to play a 4-1-4, it's possible, but it's not going to be counter-attacking. It's going to be it's going to be a lot more attacking than this. So you're going to actually be putting a lot of pressure on them to force them to clear the ball from this part. You see, we've got one, two, three. Forcing them to clear the part so that the ball so that these players can step up and win the ball during the transition. Get more okay for Fana's attention is very poor. His concentration is very low. Hacker to Sinclair. Sinclair uh, tried to play the ball over the top. Didn't work out. Again, your transition here breaks down. So this in this highlight alone, we can see that your midfield uh consolidation phase is okay but your penetration phase you, you can't get from midfield consolidation to midfield penetration because of the lack of options to pass the ball Burke to martin yadzi okay so halfway okay again um this is the danger of the one lone player on top so you see there's ball but you're back defending again so fish will play to the keeper the keeper plays to sinclair Sinclair, this is a sign that maybe you shouldn't be playing wide. You should be playing a lot more narrower. You really have to think about how these two guys get into attack. Because if they're, all, they're, if they're always going to be defending, you've got five players defending, and you've only got these two players, these one, two, three poor sorry souls trying to create chances for you. So it's going to not work out for you. I mean, it worked against some teams who think that you are uh, easy peasy, meat to eat. They would probably uh, give you this time and space to explore those kind of options. But once you start getting half-decent results, most teams are just going to sit back and say, okay, fine, let's see how good your team is at unlocking us. If they aren't, then too bad for you. And which is the problem right now for your side? Your side has a problem in this part of the transition. And then when you win the ball, you don't have any way of taking the ball out. So what's the fix here? The thing here is there are two, there are two issues. The first issue is whether or not you have enough players in support, right? Um, in, into this, once you clear the ball, there's nobody in support. You're probably playing on a very, very low defensive line. 
or rather a low mentality, which is not going to help your cause anymore because you see, you, this is how narrow you become. So, uh, and, then, and then he's going to play the safe shot. Okay, Sinclair, he's only got one option. You see his feet, they're pointing this way already. He's going to play the ball over the top. Right, and it's a poor pass. It's a, it's like the best option he's got. And it's the easiest option in the game. And he can't even do that very well. So he's gone over the top. And, uh, yeah, he, he, we, we've got to fix this. This is not good. Because this is, if by the eighth minute, is this all the transitions you see? Then something is very wrong. Because you're not building play up. You're not winning the second ball. You're not doing anything with the ball. When you do have the ball, you lose the ball. So... It means that you, you, you fundamentally your tactic has got a flaw. And this is when the four one four one becomes important, right? You got to decide whether or not to unlock your wing backs because this is just too difficult for your team. As they go through the, t yeah. then they cross the ball. I mean, there will be some games in you you probably win, right? But um, sometimes when you're playing against another side, you you want to take some chances with your tactic, and this is where. Understanding your players and your own system comes into play. We've seen enough. We're first up, we're going to say Arrivederci to this guy. Or Adios, amigos. And then we're going to come here. And we got several options, right? So we got, your, we got two tactics here. Okay, we're also going to say Arrivederci to one. Bye-bye uh, to one more tactic. Okay, so we keep... Well, we'll toss this one out of the... We'll toss this one aside. <laughs> we got this one to work on. Because all of them, it's all one tactic. 4-1-4-1. I'm going to take you, turn you into a Carrello. Wing back on attack, AP on attack, wing on attack, you wing back on support. You can be a winger on support. You will, uh, in fact, I'm just going to unlock you. You're going to be a wing back on attack. You're going to overlap. You will be a full back on support. Okay, so this is this um, wing white midfielder. Nah, let's have some fun. I don't even know whether you have players for this. Inverted wing back on attack. And you can go this way. Carrier will protect this area. AP is going to go this way. You, sorry son. You ain't no Mickey Mouse. You're going to play as a defensive wall. Because, you see, we got f we got nobody up here with him. So we're going to ask ask friends to come and give him a hand. Alright, so we've got this tactic. We're going to save this first. Uh, we're going to save this as 4141 Bob. Okay. Now, uh, we over here, we're going to load Bob okay and we're gonna pop one guy up top okay we can probably play a 4-4-2 hang on a minute 4 4 2 generally tends to be harder for most people so we're gonna stick to halfback I mean I like the 4 4 2 I think if you're good at tactics 4 4 2 is definitely a lot easier to play but um, I find that it's not easy for a lot of people the 4 4 2 so um, we'll, we'll just stick to something less uh, less difficult. So we we'll go with a defensive forward or a poacher. Both these players are not gonna. These players are gonna work with each other. That's true. Defensive forward will play the ball back and try to get others into play. But if you have half decent attackers and DLF on support, he's gonna punch through. Here we're gonna play with a Carrillo. Here we're gonna play with a. Um, Box to box midfielder, so you can bomb forward. You can because you got wing back on defend here. Here we're gonna play with a central midfielder on attack, and we're gonna give him the gap, move into channels instruction. Ah, uh, shoot less often, dribble less. Okay, so defensive for we're gonna tell these guys up top to move into. He's definitely gonna move into channels. We're gonna tell this guy to close down more, tackle harder. Move into channels. What does move into channels actually mean? So he's going to pass the ball. After he passes the ball, he's going to run between defenders. Here, we're going to ask him to... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how he goes, but we'll tell him to tackle harder, shoot less often, few risky passes. Uh, this guy, uh, he's going to um, dribble less, shoot less often, few risky passes. And in fact, we'll just leave this unchecked for now. Uh, half back on defense. Uh, you, police... Shorter passing, few receive passes, shoot less often. Yes, we don't want you to be hoofing the ball. You, okay. This player is gonna close down more tackle, harder, sit narrow. Why is he sitting narrow? I want to close down a lot more. So we, since we don't have anybody, we want to protect the flanks. We just want these guys to go in and do something first. This guy, um, sit narrow, cut inside with the uh, sit narrow is enough. Uh, full back on defense. 
I think what we're going to do with him is turn him into a wing back on defense. Uh, and we're going to tell him to close down more as well. Alright, why am I asking them to close down more? Because I want them to be the... F These guys are going to close down more. Well, actually, what we'll do is we'll just leave this on default first. And try it out in the game. And then, once we play the game, we'll confirm the setting. So this is the 4 one three, 2 how do we play the 4 one three, 2 We'll play on control. Since we've got these two guys up top, we'll play on structure so they get more, you know, they get they get to do more on their own. Now, the defensive line will play on normal. We'll play this system on fairly narrow. So, um, okay, we'll play on balance if we're not sure how this tactic is going to look. Uh, then we play the ball out of defense. We're not going to roam. And that's it. These are the shouts. Okay, for your 4 one, four one the default starting starting tag will be control. We'll go flexible. We're not going to retain possession, stay on feet, roam from positions. Okay, what we are going to do is we're going to play narrow. Um, we're going to ask this guy to close down more. Sit narrow. So I, yeah, we don't want, because I noticed there was a lot of cross field passes in your team. Okay. Uh, sit narrow, cut inside with the ball. These guys are all going to hang around uh, midfield during the midfield transition. We've got inverter winger. This guy is going to, um, we're going to close down more. This guy is going to close down more. Hang on a minute. Why are you closing down instructions? Cancel. Bang. We're going to clear everything. Alright, standard flexible. We're going to go control. Flexible. Team instructions. We're going to have use offside trap. Prevent shot goal. Keep it play our defense. Um, work ball into box. And that's how we'll start most of our games. Then this guy will be. Yes, that's what I thought was happening. There's something over your closing down instructions. Okay, so we got this guy closing down more. This guy closing down more. This guy closing down more. This guy will be getting further forward and closing down more. All right, so he's going to be slightly high up the pitch. Just punching through the middle. <coughs> the, the only. Yeah, this, this could be one way of setting it up. But what we're going to, this is just uh, a way of setting it up. But what we're going to do is we're going to play a game and see what your ass man thinks of it. Now we got a uh, If we're gonna look and see whether you got players who can play in this position, right? So you got we got looking to create a Carrillo. We got all these players in the team. So we got Rob Sinclair, who uh, tackling is seven. Matt Carter, midfielder, tackling is seven. Anticipation is seven. Max Makaka, Chris Gallagher. Hmm. Okay, Chris Gallagher can be a Carrillo on the left. Okay, then we were looking for, uh, who's this, Jacob Cook? Jacob Cook, no, nah, he's not going to be a Carrillo. Because he doesn't have the, uh, it might say he's a good as a natural Carrillo, but if you're looking at his mentals and his physicals, his physicals tackling, I want to put somebody there who can actually tackle the ball. So the best guy here is this guy. He, he's got, uh, but his aggression is very low. So um, anticipation. We got Mamadou Fofana. We got Reese Fleet. Freddie Grant. This is a I tell you, lower league saves are always a challenge. So we're gonna have to we've got um who do we choose? Eight. Okay, Jacob Cook. Uh eight, ten, nine. Okay, you might be playing there. Alright, so Jacob Cook. Um, got Jacob Cook here, so he will play where Ryan Broom is. So now we're gonna look for a player in the middle who's got very good off the ball. Off the ball, now the, this player in the middle has to have very good acceleration off the ball passing vision decisions, right? So, uh, we're looking for the CM position, uh, off the ball nine. Jacob Cook is already playing. Reese Fleet, off the ball, forget it. Freddie Grant, uh, off the ball, forget it. Godfrey Poku, uh, no, you're the halfback, okay? So, um, no. Zach McCrack, no. I'm only looking at one attribute, off the ball. Okay, off the ball, seven. Matt Carter, 
Passing, 11. Flag, 1. Leadership. Wow, oh, man. Seriously. This is uh, this reminds me of all the times I played lower league football and wished I didn't. Okay. All right. We got Rob Sinclair. Sinclair. All right. You, Rob Sinclair will be playing in Ryan Room's position. Okay. Then we've got the last position to fill up in this tactic will be this position, Room's position. Okay. So what we want here is a player that can challenge and win the ball. We got tackling. We got positioning. We got this. Okay. Godfrey Poku sounds like you are. You're going to be playing this position. All right. So, Matt Carter. A defender, a defender can also play in that role. Um, okay, Matt Carter. He will use you. You're on loan. So, we got Matt Carter who can play in the halfback position. So, we got Matt Carter now. Uh, up top, we're looking for a good pair for strike. The striker pair, uh, the combination up top. So, um, Hackett Fairchild. Okay, not too bad. He's got strength. Um, and then we've got John McAtee who's your top scorer so this is how I line up with these guys and then we got the 4 one 4 one Bob which generally would be the same players if I wanted to play the 4 one 4 one Bob then I'd have like the same players um, playing the 4 one 3 2 and get them to change that's about it okay so it's now time for us to take a look at the game and see what happens so we played three games. We've come to the conclusion that your boys can do okay. Some there are certain things that you may want to be trying out. First up, you got two defenders here, John Easterford and Lee Anderson. They both got a uh, very good jumping reach. One has got 15 and one's got 13. I decided to go with John Easterford in some of my games. So I wouldn't let this either one of these go. You can play it, you can also play a three-man back line. Now, a lot of the games you play, you use Catmore. Now, Catmore's jumping reach is only 12. Uh, he might have decent determination, but he's there's if I had a choice between Catmore and Henderson, I'll probably play Henderson, right? But you seriously need to go out there and find somebody. And this guy isn't half bad as well, so we used him in one of our games. He did play, he played pretty well. But this player Giovanni Sterling, he can't jump to save his life, so I would definitely um reconsider whether I want to use him as a central defender. You maybe can retrain him as a half back. Other than that, you know, but his composure is pretty low, 9. His passing is horrendous at 5. So he was giving away the ball at the back a lot. So it's definitely something that you need to address because if you see from the highlights of how we played, we did really well against Trami away from home. We Actually, this game, we took the lead um, and we were 2-0 up. In fact, the first half, uh, they, the opposition only had one goal. One shot on goal. In fact, it lasts up to about the 60th minute. And uh, in terms of um, strategies, I used an overload strategy for the first goal. Overload structure, we dropped it to control structure. We scored our second goal. After that, there was a bit of a kafakal in the back line. You know, they hit the post and were lucky to score the goal. And then we discovered how, how important jumping reach was because your boys couldn't clear the first header. And they won the header and scored the equaliser from there. Um, we played the same system and uh, Oxford City knocked out Tramier Rovers from the FA Trophy. It's a small competition, but it's actually a gauge of how your players are playing against higher competition. And uh, you were able to keep possession of the ball, again, are controlling and winning the second ball, which is something that you need to see. Tramier always have problems clearing the ball and this allows your team to get into the box and you know create all kinds of mayhem especially when we are playing prevent short goal keeper distribution and with two strikers and look at Easterford's ratings 9.0 definitely a player that you want to you don't want to let him go because he can play next match Easter Rock. now here we decided we know you have a 4-1-4-1 in your stable so we play a 4-1-4-1 against the 4 2 3 one and in this match we play on a control, flexible strategy. Um, now, here, remember this two wingbacks are pretty important. Against a 4 2 3 one, you notice the opposition are not really coming up the pitch. So, you, what you want to do is you want to always put pressure because these two guys, they, the higher up the pitch they go, the more they become midfielders. And then you've got your halfback forming a three man defense. So, Michael T with the ball creates an opportunity, but broom, broom slots it home with his right foot. How he did that, I have no clue. Then the second goal again with the inverter winger charging away. McAtee scoring again, second goal. 
Um, and then the third goal, again, we play the ball up. Mekala, Broom, McAtee, fire zone, third goal. Here I decided, <laughs> at this point, I decided to do an experiment. Okay, so what did I do? I actually switched to a 3 4 one, two. I was curious. I said, I think your players can play a 3 4 one, two. So I had, as you can see, three central defenders. And we have uh, Makaka playing as a DLP on defense. We got Sinclair playing as a uh, Cairoelo. We got these two guys up top, Broom as a AMC, and then we got Hackett playing as an advanced forward, giving them a headache, and got two wing backs. So uh, definitely, this is also an option for your team because your team can also play a three four one two because you got so many central defenders, and uh, it's an option, especially if you find yourself. This this is the reason why I don't like Catmore. Catmore makes a lot of mistakes. And uh, it's the, it's you have options because you you don't have a lot of players with jumping reach. You, you have doubts, right? So you can play Henderson, you can play Catmore. No, you can play Henderson. You can play Roth, uh Easterford. You can play uh, Catmore or Sterling. You still have a three man attack option. So how would I set up your three man system? It's pretty simple. Um, we'll just take a copy of uh, four form Bob. It's pretty straightforward. Two wing backs, two wing backs, one guy comes up here. Uh then we got uh three, was it three four one two? Oh yeah, three defenders. This guy becomes a stopper. This guy becomes a wing back on support. I think this guy can be a wing back on attack. This guy can be a defensive forward. Uh defensive forward. Oh, I do how do I do that? Okay, defensive forward. This guy can be an advanced forward. This guy can be a tanking midfielder. This guy will be a Deep line playmaker on defense. This guy can be a Carrello on support. This guy is gonna close down more. Now this is important. This guy's gotta close down more. Why are they closing down more? You don't have anybody else doing and uh, doing the job. Furthermore, these guys can come in and cover up anytime they screw up. So that's definitely an option. This guy should always be told to move into channels, right? Uh, if he can dribble more, this you know he can. He got players who can do that. Then these these three are always going to be told to close down more, and this guy will be told to run wide with the ball and close down more. Maybe tackle harder, just to give them, just to make it annoying for other teams. Uh, wing back on support now. He doesn't really need to bomb forward, so getting to sit narrow, cut inside with the ball. This guy will give you the width, and he'll come out to the defensive forward. What kind of a you can play this on control, you can play this on flexible, and you don't need whip crosses, just mixed. And this can be the settings of the 3 4 one, two. And you're, you're sweet because you have players for this. You got Henderson, you got Henderson, Easterford, you got so many central defenders. You got Henderson, Easterford, uh, I, I lost track. Okay, we got one here. You got this guy who can play as a central defender. That's it. You got a very, you got like a half decent back line now. Got these guys in it. Top, you got a wing back, wing back, then DLP can, uh, Makaka can be a wing, uh, deep line playmaker, passing vision decisions. Okay, that's not too bad. Then uh, this Carrello role um, can be fulfilled by quite a number of players. Uh, even Gallagher can play here, if I'm not mistaken. Then up top, uh, I think this role will be Sinclair's role because he loves to dribble with the ball. If I'm not mistaken, he is runs with ball often. He's gonna create dictates. Uh, runs with ball often. So this guy is gonna create havoc. You got a person who can dribble the ball here, get forward whenever possible. He's just gonna be a. He's just gonna be annoying. So you have the place for this. It's a. It's definitely a viable option. So you've got three different tactics that your team can use. The problem for you was that you're using one tactic, right? This and you went changing. You got like the same tactic doing different things. I don't like the forward for one with an advanced forward because the advanced forward is to go out there and do a lot of work. Now it doesn't make any sense. You rather have the def the advanced forward dropping back and getting others into play, which means you have to camp. If you have to camp, then the wing backs can't be on defense duty. They kind of overlap, so you get more attacking options, which is generally what camping is supposed to do. Now, if you're camping with only three players attacking the box, you're three players against the rest of the team. Not gonna work out for you very often. You'll be you'll be okay against teams that are attacking you, but what are you gonna do when teams are gonna start defending and you, defending against you? Once you start becoming a better side, you gotta start becoming a bit more creative with your goal scoring opportunities and you gotta also know what your players bring to the table and I noticed that you kept using Catmore and Stevens which is which was bugging me a bit uh, I would have gone for definitely Easterford or Henderson in my back line 
because they both got jumping reach. Uh, I know the flair, their leadership, who gives a shit about that? But, you know, you've got a position is eight. Okay, so what? You know, got three defenders. But still, you know, jumping, you, you were losing to the second ball inside the box. In the box, you're losing to the second ball. I mean, this is the worst place to lose, to, to give up assists. So I definitely will address those areas of the game. And uh, player selection, you, you got to choose the right players. You're going to know how to unlock sites by unleashing your assets. And furthermore, you got to think about um, when you start getting better, maybe you want to have two strikers up top because two strikers are definitely... You know, two strikers are always going to be better than one striker. <laughs> I mean, it's just numerically the case. I mean, of course, you can play one striker, but then uh, you're going to have to get others into the box, eh? So I hope you enjoyed this edition of Game Changer. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Uh, once again, this show is open to all my patrons who support the channel. Uh, and I look forward to more shows of this sort in the near future. You, you guys have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.